أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I seek refuge in God from Satan they curse in the name of God the beneficent the merciful there was this person who made a lot of poems against the Holy Prophet of Islam and in the first war that was waged against the Muslims, he was one of the few poets that encouraged pagans to battle and fight the Muslims and the Holy Prophet of Islam. In the suburbs of Holy Mecca, this person encouraged the Bedouins and the pagans. They assembled them and motivated them to join the army in order to fight the nascent Muslim community. And he himself also took part in these wars. The pagans, the pagan army traveled for 400 kilometers in order to arrive to Badr and finally to attack the Muslims. And all along the way, this person recited poems to encourage people to fight the Holy Prophet. Finally, after this war ended, this person was put, was captive, captivated by the Muslims. He was a warmonger. He also took part in the war, encouraged people to fight Muslims, and now he was captured. He was brought to the Holy Prophet of Islam. He said to the Holy Prophet, as the history, as the historians say, he said that I have five girls that they don't have anything to support themselves. Set me free and spare my life because of my girls, because of my daughters. And he promised to the Holy Prophet to stop plotting and conspiring against Islam. The Holy Prophet set him free. After a while, the pagans assembled another army to attack Muslims again. Safan bin Umayya asked this person to join the army and again read poems and mobilize the people against the Holy Prophet. But this person said that I have promised to the Holy Prophet to not join the army. But Safan told him that this time will be the end of the Holy Prophet. We will kill the Holy Prophet and end the religion of Islam and your promise to him would mean nothing. Finally, this person also joined the war and encouraged people in and around the holy city of Mecca to fight against the Holy Prophet of Islam. He took part in the Battle of Uhud. He 
اینم پاشد رفت باز توی مکه مکرمه و اطراف مکه مردم رو جمع برای اینکه یک جنگ مثلا یک آخرین جنگ بکنن و اسلام رو از بین ببرن و پیغمبر اسلام that poet who had promised to the holy prophet not to fight against the holy prophet در جنگ احد شرکت کرد He was brought to the, bo- to the war and he was also joined to the war by the encouragements of Safwan bin Umayyah. This is only one of the many countless examples, historical examples, in which the Holy Prophet displayed his utmost virtue and morality. و در جنگ احد هم شرکت نکنه اما صفوان اوورد on the other hand we have the so called successors of the holy prophet the ones who claimed themselves as the caliphs of the muslims and they committed so many atrocities for once we can give you the example of Deibel, who was a famous and popular poet. Still, his poems are recorded in the Arabic body of literature. And Deibel was a very famous person. Even the Westerners also know about this poet. Many stories and poems have been translated from this poet. Debel used to live at the time of Harun, the Abbasid ruler, and then he, and also during the time of Amin and Ma'amun and also Mu'tasim, the three other Abbasid rulers. On one occasion, he read two lines of poetry to criticize the, some of the Abbasid rulers. And then he later said, For these two lines of poetry, For as many as 40 years since the time of Harun the Abbasid ruler, for as many as 40 years, Debel was fearful of being captured by the agents of the Abbasid rulers and be executed. به خاطر دو بیت شعر میگه چل ساله یعنی از زمان هارون For the years of terror and fear because of two lines of poetry تموم شد معتصم چل سال What caused Islam to grow on such a fast pace The Prophet's virtuous conduct and morality and these atrocities was what caused the Islam, the growth of Islam, to be stymied. It is our responsibility to introduce the virtues and the moralities of the Holy Prophet, particularly during the wars, because usually in the wars, there's no place for virtue. And both sides of, of the war just want to kill each other. However, the Holy Prophet always was an embodiment of virtue and morality at all times. There are tens and tens of stories from both the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali, peace be upon them, who displayed virtue during their wars. Even when they were victorious, They stopped fighting as soon as the enemy was defeated. They did not try to kill the remnants of the enemy army. In those past times, all captives were killed. However, the Holy Prophet of Islam 
did not allow his soldiers and the Muslim community to mistreat the captives in any way. There are many stories from the Prophet's great morals and his great virtuous conduct with respect to the captives. And the youths, the Muslim youths, should also read about these historical facts and then introduce them to the entire world so that maybe in the future we can see traces of true awakening both in the Muslim and non-Muslim communities. And by this way, we can contribute to the bright future of the world. In the past 50 years, I have witnessed that the world is going towards darkness and this should end. May God bless Muhammad and his pure household.